This is the story of the many seaweed roofs on Læsø, where the houses through several centuries have had their very own characteristics, with their big and heavy seaweed roofs. These kinds of roofs have not been seen anywhere else in the world, which makes them completely unique houses to live in. We're going to have a look at the origin of the seaweed roofs and investigate how people nowadays build a new seaweed roof using the traditional principles. The small island Lesu, which is placed in the middle of Kattegat, has always been very isolated and with only up to a few thousand citizens. It mostly contains of sand and therefore it is difficult to cultivate the land. So back in the 16th century, when money was tight, it was a natural thing to use seaweed as a roof deck since it was free. But what we nowadays call seaweed is actually eelgrass that would just flow softly up to the beach from where it was easy to drag onto shore and let dry. After this, it would be placed on the roof in order to be sheltered from rain and wind. On Lesu, there has been as much as 300 properties that were thatched with eelgrass. But during the 19th century, the eelgrass caught a disease, which reduced the number of houses considerably. We will get back to this later on. First, we are visiting a proper seaweed house from 1769. It's placed on Jules Minnevei, and it's a part of the former mayor's family-owned property. This is the seaweed house where I was born and raised. In 1971, I took over my childhood home from my father. And let me put it this way, I think this place has a bigger meaning for me than what I first imagined. I guess I've previously felt that I wanted to do other things in life, but the very idea of anyone else living in just this house, I simply couldn't bear it. The old fishermen's wives, who were the ones building the roofs, probably wouldn't have imagined that a seaweed roof would last up to 250 years, as Olaf's has. A regular tile roof's lifespan is approximately 100 years, while other roof decking materials have an even shorter lifespan. The question then is, how much maintenance is necessary on a seaweed roof? Actually, I've only done very little maintenance. It's very difficult to maintain it. There can be problems with the ridge and with new ridges on the roof, but also with the covering around the chimney. If you have to take down the chimney, it's difficult to tighten it again, which has created some trouble in the past. The special thing, you see, about seaweed is that it doesn't rot or in any other way decay. So the attrition on a seaweed roof is the demolition, and the roof used to be thicker when I was a child. Many people ask why there is no gutter on a seaweed roof. A gutter is not an existing option, since it would be very broad and so on. This is also why that when it has been raining, the roof will continue dripping for several days. So you have to go out of the house to check and see if it has actually stopped raining again. Olau is hoping that soon he will be able to change his old roof, resembling two other properties on Lesø, which have had their seaweed roofs changed during the last number of years. This is one of the remaining seaweed houses on the eastern part of Lesø that really needs a new roof. It has been leaking for almost 10 years, but as opposed to Olaus residence, this has only worked as a holiday home. The seaweed thatcher and his men are in full swing removing the old roof. They have tried it many times before. They are the only ones who have taken the challenge and taught other people the old craftsmanship of changing a seaweed roof. A seaweed thatcher's profession has been gone for a generation. We start by peeling off the peat. It's a needlework where you use the fingers to scratch. It can be quite difficult to wriggle them free, since they have grown into the seaweed. What we know is that all the elderly people that we've talked to have always said, and my own parents said it too, that you don't fix a seaweed roof, you change it. 
It must have been the policy back then that when it starts raining in sight, you can't really figure out why it's raining from this end and why it's leaking two meters further down. It's completely hopeless to figure out. So the only thing you can do is to peel it off and start all over again. Back in the day, they just wouldn't change it. Talking about the roofs and why it's raining through them, I must say that this right here also looks quite fine when you see it from the road. But for example, if you take a look at the seaweed right here, there is at least 60% moisture in it. It's very wet here, but next to this, it's actually very dry. So it's not easy to find the holes when it starts pouring down. And why does it rain exactly here? It's possible that it comes from here and runs down, and it's also possible that it comes from over there and runs down here. It was why it was set in ancient time, you can't fix a seaweed roof. The only thing you can do is change it. Henning Johansson and his men have since 2012, when the big seaweed roof renovation started, torn down many seaweed roofs and built them up again. But when they tear down a roof, they have to look very carefully how the roof is built. They constantly search for new knowledge, since it's not possible to find any descriptions or sketches that can tell you how a seaweed roof was built 200 years ago. And when they reach the battens, they find that they have been backfilled differently than what they are used to see. Backfilling means the layer of material that keeps the seaweed from falling down onto the ceiling. See, so here in the bottom, that is broad. Take a look at the bottom. This is where it's backfilled. Everything starts with a backfilling going across the battens, right? And this is where we see that inside, along the battens, there is rice straw. This is a sign that this is one of the last roofs made since they were using spricks on the older ones. Above all the battens, there is an inch just to cover, so the bottom is quite fine inside. Also, you see that when you look at it from the inside, you will see this straw. So from the inside, you won't even notice that it's a seaweed roof when it's backfilled this way. On the other hand, you would have a huge attic inside that's very easy to keep clean from cobweb and so on. It will take a few days to tear down the old seaweed from the roof, and in the meantime, we will be looking into where the seaweed comes from. The roofs of Lesu are called seaweed roofs, but in fact they are made of a sort of seagrass. It's called eelgrass. It constantly forms new leaves that are released from the bottom of the sea and washed up on the coasts. Especially during the summer and fall are good times to collect the eelgrass. It has to happen while the grass is still green. The eelgrass used on Lesu is picked up from the waters surrounding the Danish islands, especially Mu and Bowu. This is due to the fact that there is a tradition to collect eelgrass and that there are huge amounts of it here. All the way towards the 1960s, eelgrass was exported from mattresses and isolation from what then was called Kaleheu Tang Export. It has grown incredibly well during the past time. It only tolerates to lie in the water for a few days. And if the fibers break, it cannot be used for the seaweed roofs on Lesu. The fibers in the seaweed will break if it's in the water for too long. The seaweed is released from the bottom of the sea and floats to the shore where it will be picked up. The eelgrass is treated completely as hay grass that is spread on a field and hereafter turned frequently to dry. It looks like one of those lanes should be enough for approximately one bale of seaweed. And a bale weighs approximately 250 kilos. Now we're measuring the moisture on the bales. It is 22%. Experience shows that the moisture must be approximately 25% to avoid demolition of the seaweed. 
In 2017 and 18, part of the eelgrass that is used on Lesser was shipped with the museum ship Samka of Marstel. From Steja Harbour, it is shipped to Österby Harbour on Lesser, from where it's driven to the so-called seaweed bank, where it's stored until it needs to be used. Living in a house with a seaweed roof can have its charm and challenges. Olau knows all about this. He has lived here as a child and now again as an adult. When he took over the house in 1971, and he's now lived here for more than 48 years. This chair you see right here is from 1804, and it's made by the man who built this house. To live in a seaweed house has some advantages. During the summer, it's often nice and cool, and during the winter, it helps a little bit with isolating the house, but it's not completely good since the cold tends to rise from the ground. In principle, a seaweed roof is tight, but in time, when it is as old as this one, it will gradually start falling apart here and there. And if it becomes very dry, it will contract a bit. And if it starts to rain, a lot of water can float through the attic. So this is also something that I have lived with my whole life. To assure the preservation of the old, unique seaweed roofs on Lesu, the citizens in the remaining 33 seaweed houses have created an association and together with the Castle and Culture Protection Agency and the AP Moller Foundation, they have made it possible to put up the new seaweed roofs on the houses. The actual craftsmanship thatching the seaweed roof was almost forgotten. You only had the knowledge from 1952 when the farm Detskoren was moved from Lesser to the Open Air Museum in Brede. But there was a seaweed thatcher and some women from Lesser who still mastered the old technique. The women were known as washerwomen because the long sausages of eelgrass were called washers. Now we are going to take a look into this kind of craftsmanship and way of building. If the seaweed is of the finest quality, you can create a tail of four meters length and use it for making washers. A washer is twisted seaweed with a body and a long tail that can be tied on the bottom batten. Now we've finished the body, so Peter, if you would lean forward and hold the part, I'll take this to the tail here. In the old times, the washers were twisted on the ground, but through experimenting, a seaweed thatcher from Lesu found that a power drill and a homemade machine for twisting are just as good as using their hands to twist the washers on the ground. Okay, the process is like this. I will put the tail behind here, always from the bottom and up. The tighter the rope is, the easier it will be to twist it around and make it twist and curl. This is a sign of strength. Try to give it a twist down here, Peter. Try to twist it around a few times. Here it comes. And then I put this as far up as possible. Then you get the tail and move it around again. Then you twist it, like that. It's almost there, then the tail will go from here and down. It sticks like a rope. You see it here, don't you? The tail goes around the washer a few times, and then it ends down by Peter. And because he has twisted it, it will be one firm unit. That's it. So then, do it in. The washers are tied on the bottom three battens, which create a washer's bank. Washers are also tied along the gable, which leads to the ridge. 
fragments are used to fill out the space between the washers and the battens. This becomes a tail made of twisted and twined seaweed. Before it's possible to place the loose seaweed on the roof, the branches of birch are placed on the battens. If not, the seaweed will slide through the battens and into the ceiling. This work is called backfilling. Now the loose seaweed is used, so the roof will be two meters broad. This property is from around the 1750s, when the big sand drift was threatening the existence of the island. In order to save the island, it was possible to receive a lot for free, if you intended to use the land for farming. In this way, you could hold on to the soil and at the same time create your own new livelihood. Lilian and her husband bought this property back in 2016. At this time, the property had been empty for eight years and they wanted to save it from demolition. Now, two and a half years later, the property is moving in the right direction. <laughs> this is our seaweed farm, which has the world's newest seaweed roof. It has actually just been finished yesterday, when we finished the last cutting, so it's now possible to look out the windows again. Also, we see that there has been added more and more to our farm. Every time they would have brought wood to build on, maybe from a stranding, when they picked up the seaweed from the beach, where an old woman would go down and get it, and when they had dig up some clay, they would add that to the house. For example, if they needed it for more habitation or an extra domestic animal. So we see that there's been added more to this wing approximately six times. And this wing, which is from around the 740s, is the oldest part of it. Here was the oldest part of the building where there used to be an open fireplace and a smoke hole up in the middle. So there was no chimney. The reason they did not build a chimney above the fireplace is that back then, approximately 250 years ago, it was way too expensive. But also because it's difficult to build a chimney and make it completely right if you have a seaweed roof. We're going to look further into that now. To secure against penetrative water by the chimney, three layers of clay are used to seal in different levels. This right here is placed with a crane, and we are now by the top of the battens, and it's possible to see just the top of the backfilling. This is where the chimney starts. We found out that we're going to place some clay here. We'll do the same once we reach this part, and then we'll do it when we reach the other part. We do this in order to prevent the water from forcing its way down. It's kind of important that we care about this process. We put clay on here, loosely in lumps like these. If the Lord's water will run down the sides of the chimney, it will do the same as if we had taken it up here, okay? Okay. Just keep standing there, Espion. Good. Just work a bit with the chimney and let it fall down. Perfect. We put the clay on top of this. Now we put loose seaweed on again until we reach this point. Then we add the last layer of clay. Yes. And then I want one over here. I usually say that we stop once we cannot see the chimney from down there anymore. Then we end up here. 1.90 meters above the top button. 
After approximately one month, when the seaweed was settled, we will cut the doors and the windows free. Oh yeah, it's a warm feeling. After approximately one year's time, where the seaweed has settled, the windows and doors will be cut free again. Back at Lilian's place and the seaweed farm Skåen, where Lilian will show us around inside the house. And up here we had the old gable from 1740. It's made of mud-built stone and the old woodwork still stands nicely. It's a little brittle in the bottom, so it's got new beams to lean on, so it can keep standing. We think that it was an important part of the story that it stayed here. Now we'll go to the barn, and here I would like to show you something very special. And it's quite beautiful. This is the old stable, which we have chosen to preserve. Here you can see a seaweed roof from the inside, and you can also see the old beams. If you look up on the seaweed roof here, you'll be able to see that on the three bottom battens, the washers have been twisted around. A huge washer's bank has been created that can carry the rest of the seaweed roof, and it's simply loose seaweed that's been placed on two of these battens. There is approximately 90 tons of seaweed on this house. And here you see the rafters that's been made. Even though they're new, they've been made after the old technique. This means that the rafters and the beams are joined together, so they both carry with the straps here. This means that they can carry twice as much as you would have done in the traditional way. And this is a special lizard technique. If you ask an engineer to calculate this, they will tell you that it's not doable. There is just too much weight on the roof construction. But experience shows that they have been here for 300 years, and this is why we feel quite calm about the fact that it is actually doable. Many of these beams had gradually gotten really brittle, they have been woodworms and dry rot in them, but we have succeeded in maintaining some of them, and we actually find it quite funny that by cobbling together some of them, we've been able to save one which has 1859 written on it, and on the other one a drawn horseshoe, a small greeting from the previous owner, Carlo. We believe that it will bring us luck, and we're looking very much forward to living in it. The roof on Lilian and her husband's farm only needs peat on the ridge, which keeps the seaweed on the top of the roof. I'm up here to inspect how much the roof has given in since we put it up, just for fun. It's been one month where it has sunken from here to here. And what I'm now curious about is to see how much the roof will give in during the following year. It does not keep sinking. Yeah. Yeah. I always feel a certain excitement looking at the valley gutter after a while to see if it actually keeps its shape, if it's nice. I'm quite happy with this valley gutter. It is exactly as I wanted it to be, so far at least. So I keep praying to God that he will support me in this. The peats for the finish and the ridge are carved on the grass fields at Rønnerne on Læsø. In the old times, it was the women who carved the peats with a spade. Nowadays, the seaweed thatcher have a special machine for it. In the beginning, the seaweed thatcher would carve them up to three meters long, but they were difficult to handle on the roof. Experience has shown that approximately 1.7 meters length is a good fit. You get the strongest peat by carving it relatively close to a stream and channels. If the field has been chopped by horses or sheep or cattle, 
it gives a firmer growth of grass and thereby a stronger peat. Så kører vi alle. Ja. Okay, is, um... All right, when a peat can handle this, it's strong enough. But this right here, it weighs approximately 30 kilos and it's drowning in water. But have a look at this and see how nice and oily the ground is. The root system goes all the way to here. This is not going to be a peat that is falling apart. Okay, good. The seaweed thatcher lets the roof settle for a year before the ridge of the roof is placed. In this period, a net of iron is placed on the top of the roof to assure that the seaweed will not be blown off. The ridge is exposed to a lot of wind. Looking at old photos from Lesø, you will see that the peat was only lying a bit scattered and it only served the purpose of holding on to the seaweed. The seaweed thatchers of today also used to do this, but over time it's been clear that the peat is much more fastened, especially if they lie next to each other with 5 cm overlap. After a few months the peat will have grown into the roof and it becomes one big stormproof finish of the seaweed roof. The peat must be placed during the fall so that rain and moisture will be added while the grass and eelgrass are growing together. Already at springtime the roots will be green and growing and thereby giving the seaweed roof its very own character. A seaweed roof weighs approximately 160 kilos per square meter. The total weight of an average house is around 35 to 40 tons. Ulgården is a four-winged farm owned by Bertel and Lissi. In September 2016, they had the roofs renewed. This was done following the original principles, where the seaweed thatcher Henning and his men were working with the gable. We met the married couple more than a year after the renovation was finished, and we asked them why they have chosen to own and live in a seaweed house. It was a lifelong dream that came true when we got the permission to take over the property and we promised the old lady that had used it as a holiday home that we would take very good care of it and we must say we have kept our promise. At the same time it's so special to have the seaweed roof. Even though you don't sense it inside the house, when stepping outside you just realize that this is a living organism. When it was put up, it was brown and then came the next summer, that must have been last summer, and even though the sun was not shining that much this summer, the seaweed roof still got a tan. But it becomes tanned in the way that it gradually becomes grey. And as it tilts more and more together, the spare pieces sprinkle down and get swept away. And when you're inside the house, it's like any other house, but the fact that you have this living organism on the roof means everything. And now, after the renovation, we reap the benefits from living in the most beautiful home you can imagine. At least that's what we think. Yes, indeed. We enjoy this site every single day. Let's go home, that's good. Yes, come along, Mille. We're going this way. You see, she's a bit faster than us. The Thatcher's craftsmanship is completely special. And so are the last remaining seaweed houses of Lesø. Roofs built this way do not exist anywhere else on Earth. 
This is also why it's very important to preserve the necessary knowledge for continuously thatching the seaweed roofs of Lesu.